this coffee shop is open. And its coffee is superb, but Susie is hesitant to go inside because this, this is where the coffee wizard lives. His workshop is filled with dusty tomes of witchcraft, complex formulas for his magic, and a variety of instruments only he knows how to use. The coffee wizard is never alone. He has his familiar, Mio. He has two apprentices to his black coffee magic. Although they might be former customers he has enslaved and bewitched to do his bidding, it's hard to tell. It starts innocently enough. You are pulled in by the intoxicating aroma of his potions. You insist on takeout, but he offers you a seat anyway. This is how it begins. He sets a full cup of coffee in front of you and says it's on the house. Before you know it, he has stolen hours of your time with his spellbinding stories, fellow wizards, and enchanting smile. It is impossible to leave. But his potions? Oh, his potions. They are romantic with a strong taste of honey and a bouquet of flowers. They are for the people, they are for the people with a sourness that is beautiful and best enjoyed at 2 p.m. They are worth braving the collection he has crammed into his small workshop. The coffee wizard sits at the center of it all, like a spider, waiting for its prey. And poor Susie is caught in his web.